Well, it had been rumored for more than a year, but even today when it happened, it took some by surprise. Jim Flaherty steps down as finance minister. Next to the prime minister, the most powerful, the most influential job in government. But why now? And was it the right time to do it? The insiders have some thoughts on this, and they're here with us tonight. Jamie's in Toronto. Kathleen is in Ottawa, as is Ellie Alboim sitting in for David, who's away this week. Jamie, I want to start with you, not only because Jim Flaherty is a member of your party, the Conservative Party, but also because you're a friend. So why now? Why did it happen now? And, and go beyond the message track, OK? Yeah, I, I will go beyond the message track. You know, I'm thinking today about the speech that Jim Flaherty gave when uh, he ran for leader of the Ontario Party. He, he ended that speech, Peter, by saying, you know, when it comes our time to lead, if people feel a little bit more secure, they feel a bit more confident about the future, if they walk a little taller, then perhaps it'll have been worthwhile. And I think he decided today that it has been worthwhile. He's been doing this for a long time. He's got a family. He's got uh, three boys uh, that he need, and a wife that he wants to spend time with. And, uh, you know, there's never a perfect time to go. Uh, you know, he's, he, as you know, he, ba he did balance the budget uh, last time out with that contingency fund. So I think his health was on the upswing, and he finally decided that, you know, today was the day to go. Kathleen, what did you make of it? Well, no surprise, I probably didn't agree with many of the decisions Flaherty made as finance minister, but I have a lot of respect for him as a politician and someone who's been so dedicated to public service. I grew up in the riding next door to uh, uh, Mr. Flaherty's riding, and I can tell you he's incredibly popular. So I like to imagine that yesterday, you know, was St. Patrick's Day, as you know, and Mr. Flaherty used to often refer to his Irish heritage. So I, I like to imagine him having a last toast on St. Patrick's Day as finance minister and then going off to chase his pot of gold, if you will, <laughs> uh, on Bay Street. And I wish him and his family all the best. Uh, Ellie, you know, you worked for a finance minister and Paul Martin uh, for a while. You know it's a tough job, especially when you've been in it a long time. Is, is Flaherty deserving of the, of the kind of things that are being said about him today? Oh, I think so. Uh, there have, you know, there's a new pattern in Canada of very long-lived finance ministers, starting with Michael Wilson under Mulroney, then Paul Martin under Krejci, and now Flaherty under Mr. Harper. I think he settled into the job, learned the job, did very, very well at it. Um, you know, there were some ups and downs, but he was the rock of the government, just as Martin had been for Krejci and Wilson had been for Mulroney. Uh, I think he'll be missed. I think this is an important change. But look, the timing's not bad. Uh, the next budget is a critical budget. It's going to be a platform for the next election. I don't know if Mr. Flaherty's heart was still in it. Jamie would know better than I. Uh, but this gives the Prime Minister a lot of time to think through replacements and what the next budget might be. Yeah, not a lot of time. He's thinking of <laughs> making that announcement as early as tomorrow. But I assume he has given it a lot of thought because I think we all know that this, uh, this day has been coming and we For might sure. not, not have picked today, but we knew it was coming. Um, in, in terms of that uh, challenge now before the government, um, what is the challenge in picking a new finance minister? Because it's such a critical job. Kathleen? Well, I mean, they've got to look. They've got a financial statement to make in the fall, financial update, and they've got the next budget, as Ellie just said, that they'll be running their next campaign on. So they need to find somebody strong, who's personable, who Canadians can relate to, um, who can deliver that message strongly in the next election. I mean, there are lots of strong ministers in Mr. Harper's cabinet. That's clear. But the question is, who will he choose and who also doesn't have leadership ambitions? What, how important is the relationship between the finance minister and the prime minister? Because we've seen, Ellie, as you run through the history books, they're not always being great, but it's still an important uh, duo, those two. Here's what Flaherty himself said about his relationship with Stephen Harper. He said this in a great interview with Chris Hall about six weeks ago. Watch this. I think some of the other ministers are surprised sometimes that I, I debate with him. And uh, so we don't always agree, no. Um, but um, I, can usually, I can usually get him around to a point of view that I can live with. <laughs> when I heard him say that, I figured, okay, this day, it can't be long now before he goes. But he's talking about that relationship and how blunt they, they actually have to be with each other. Jamie? 
Well, of course, the, the, the economic brand of this government really has been the Harper Flaherty brand. Uh, they've been economic partners uh, ever since uh, Harper was elected. And so I think one of the things going forward, you want to build on that, especially as you see the Liberals coming up in the polls. It's really going to be important for the Prime Minister to own economic stewardship as he goes as he goes forward. So they've had an ability to disagree and to come to, as the minister says, a place where uh, they can they can both be together. So as they as he picks his new minister, whoever she or he may be, they're going to have to keep on that. I don't think it, the Canadians going to want a radical change in the direction of the country's finances. Help us with the with the replacement game here, Ellie. Not in terms of names. Everybody's playing that game. But the type of person that it has to be at this juncture of a government's life. Yeah, well, I think it, it's got to start with, um, and it'll be strange to say, uh, but with an eye towards the financial markets. I think that the markets are going to demand continuity. Uh, they want to make sure that policy continues along the course it has. Uh, this prime minister, by the way, is much more involved in budgets than most prime ministers are. Um, so that'll be, a, the market will take some comfort from that. But they want to see in the new minister uh, someone who cares deeply about financial stability, uh, about economic stability. And, you know, that's part of the problem uh, that happens to every finance minister. They kind of take ownership of economic management and fiscal management. Uh, they lose track of politics sometimes, care more about policy, and that ends up with some of the friction with their colleagues and their prime ministers. Uh, I'm not suggesting that was Mr. Flaherty's uh, case, but I think it's fair to say uh, he was deeply into policy and the next finance minister uh, in order for, for confidence to build, um, has to represent that kind of interest. And um, Peter, you know, it's not like the House is on recess for the summer. I mean, they're coming back in a week and a half, and uh, yeah. he's going to have to pick someone who can get on top of these uh, issues lickety split, or they're going to get killed in the House of Commons. And there are some challenging issues on the economy, just as we saw today with the StatScan figures. Mm -hmm. right. Kathleen, help me with this, uh, with this part of today's story, because I think it in some ways signals a new... Uh, time period before the, the next election where people have to make decisions about whether or not they're going to run again and uh, whether they're, we're going to see other retirements, other resignations. Yeah, certainly. And all the parties now have opened up their nomina nominations across the country. And they're also grappling with the fact that a lot of these boundaries for these ridings have changed as a result of the 30 new extra seats we're getting in 2015. So MPs, incumbent MPs, are being forced to choose, are you going to run again? And in which part of your riding are you going to run again? And so that's why a lot of these decisions are coming to the forefront. We've seen a rash of uh, resignations recently. Ted Menzies, Lori Hahn, uh, New Democrats such as Gene Crowder and Alex Adamanko. And they're doing that now because they want to give the parties enough time in the lead up to 2015 to actually build the new candidate's profile. And that's obviously even more the case, Peter, in the case of a finance minister. Uh, so I think Flaherty uh, Red didn't have the heart to continue, and he's giving the Prime Minister lots of space to establish a credible successor. Give me some last thoughts on, on Jim Flaherty. You've got a minute, a minute left. I mean, when, when somebody has been in that position as long as he had, I think there's only one other finance minister in the history of the country who's been uh, in longer than him. Um, what do you want to say about him uh, on, this, on this day, um, Jamie? Well, you know, Jim Flaherty's image is a, is a very highly defined one, a tax cutter, a fiscal guy, whatever. But I think when uh, the history books are written, not only will it be long, the longevity of his service, his relationship with the Prime Minister, but it will be for what he did for disabled Canadians and vulnerable Canadians, uh, whether it was tax pro savings programs and other programs that he's brought in. He really did an awful lot, and it, I don't think in in the immediate term he got credit for that. I think in the longer term you're going to see a, a, a picture of a very, very compassionate Jim Flaherty emerge. You going to be that kind, uh, Ellie? Uh, I guess I'd go to 2008 um, and the decision to stimulate the economy and to go deeply into deficit. Uh, it would have rankled him ideologically and philosophically, um, but he did it. He thought it had to be done and I think he carried it off with a certain amount of uh, aplomb. Uh, argued for it forcefully, uh, and then gradually wound it down. Last quick word, Kathleen. I'd agree with Elliot. It's 2008. Actually, just back it up a little bit in terms of history and his original uh, fiscal update, which didn't address the financial crisis, but then, yes, him returning in the new year and actually addressing it with the, with the package that he did with Harper. All right. Thank you all. Elliot, good to have you with us. Good to be here. We'll do it again.
Kathleen in Ottawa, Jamie here in Toronto.